Hi everyone, this is Teo from ParkerBlocks.com. Today I'm going to show you this pen display. This is the Pablo Coast 13. If you do not know what a pen display is, it's basically a monitor that you can draw on. It's like a Wacom Cintiq, but this is a Cintiq alternative. You can see that this is really thin, but this is not a tablet. You actually do need to connect this to a computer in order to use it. So today I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of this. This review is going to be a bit long as usual because I'm going into the details and also I'm going to show you some of the drawing software that I use with this monitor. If you want to save some time, you can just check out the text review that I have just posted on my website. The link is in the video description below. All right, let's take a look at what's included with this monitor. This is the packaging box. Pretty straightforward design, very clean and simple. This is a 13.3 inch screen. The resolution is 1080p, contrast ratio 800 to 1. It takes HDMI and USB input. Pressure sensitivity is slightly over 2000 and the rest are not very important. Oh, this is color, 16 million colors. This is actually a TFT screen and the pen that it uses is wireless and battery free. It supports Mac and Windows. Let me unbox this very quickly. I'm just going to slide this off. So they have some foam here to protect the monitor. Let me just move this aside. So these are the accessories. Inside this box, we have the cables. There is only one cable. On this side of the cable, we have a mini HDMI port and a USB Type-C port. These two will go into the monitor. And on the other side, we have two USB Type-A and a full-size HDMI. This will go to the computer. The other two things included in the box would be the manual and the driver CD. In this box, we have the pen case. This is a rather sturdy pen case has a nice weight to it feels quite heavy so let's open this it closes with magnets so that's quite nice and this is the pen six replacement tips are included and this is the nib remover this pen has a nice matte texture on the whole body and also the grip section i like this matte texture because it doesn't collect dust like those rubber grips two buttons on the side that's the tip and at the back we have an eraser this pen does not require any battery to work as such it does not require charging so that is very convenient and it feels quite nice to hold in hand so this is the 13.3 inch pen display this screen is matte so it has slight texture feels quite nice when drawing although it still feels a bit slippery though but it's definitely better compared to those glossy glass display where sometimes when you draw on it you can feel or even hear the squeaky sound so here it draws and feels quite nice on the side of this tablet are the physical shortcut buttons there are four at the top four at the bottom one right in the center of this scroll wheel for this scroll wheel you need to press down a bit hard in order to turn this if you just swipe your finger like this it's not easy to turn. Unfortunately for left-handed users, there is no setting in the driver to allow this monitor to be used in left-handed mode, at least for the current version of the driver that I have tested. I have emailed Pablo to ask them about this. They say they are going to add left-handed support in the future, but um, not right now. Let's take a look at the other side here. This is the power button. These are the buttons to change the settings for this monitor, things like contrast and brightness. This is the mini HDMI port and this is the USB Type-C port. Notice that there is no power port, that's because the power is supplied through this USB Type-C port. Overall build quality for this pen display feels quite solid. All the surfaces are matte, including the screen. Edges are rounded off. On the back, it's also matte with four rubber feet. Feels quite solid, feels quite nice. Very little flex. 
One important thing to take note is the pen display draws its power from the USB cables so the ports that you are using needs to be powered so that there is enough power to go through the cables to power the monitor and if these ports are powered you actually just need to use one of the USB cable and that would be sufficient enough to power the pen display if there is not enough power maybe you need to connect the other USB port this is the USB Type-C port that powers the pen display and this is the mini HDMI port that provides the graphics this is the power button that has lighted up I'm using this pen display on my Mac OS let me show you what you can change with the settings on the monitor so let me press the menu you can change the brightness, contrast, signal source by the way if you are using mini display port or DVI port you will need to get an adapter in order to use this pen display all these other settings all this you can leave it as default I would change the brightness because this screen is not very bright so let me just increase this brightness The standard color profile should work fine on this display but I have calibrated my display so I'm going to choose that, it's here. When I calibrated this display I had a readout of 95% sRGB and 75% Adobe RGB so that's quite decent. Viewing angles is alright on this tablet, actually when I'm using this tablet I don't really move my head all the way to this side or this side so I'm usually staring it like this left or right so viewing angles is very adequate so after you have installed the driver on Mac OS that little driver icon will appear here at the taskbar or you can locate the driver settings in the system preferences here so here's the driver where you can change the settings on the pen and also the shortcut buttons now for the pen only the first button here is available to be configured the second button is disabled for some reason so you can only change one button and this is where you can change the pressure sensitivity it works fine at default value this is where you can map the screen to the OS I use 100% mapping and this is where you can calibrate the tablet to remove parallax as well now notice that there is no uh, setting for you to change to left-handed mode so unfortunately for left-handed users this tablet cannot be used in that mode and this is the key settings this is where you can assign specific keyboard shortcuts to those physical shortcut buttons on the left side so you just have to click this click the little command button and here you can assign any keyboard shortcut you want so I'm going to click command and for a new file and click OK and this will be reflected here now notice that there is no way to configure the scroll wheel the scroll wheel has been configured to change uh, the zoom in Photoshop so it's a command plus or command minus unfortunately there is no way to assign it to any other functions for example I would love to have the scroll wheel change the brush size because it will be so much more intuitive to just increase the brush size or decrease it just by turning the screw it's so much easier than pressing those uh, buttons one by one but unfortunately there's no way to do that here and this last tab here this is Mac driver version 5.6.0 hopefully they can add those additional features like changing the scroll wheel or having the left-handed mode in the future all right let's test out the drawing functionality I'm using Photoshop CS5 on my Mac right now let's create a new file so earlier on I assigned the new file button here and here it is I'm going to press here to choose an A4 or letter size paper zoom at 100% and I'm going to show you some strokes that I can create here so thin and thick lines this tablet is very responsive let me zoom in to show you the lines closer so when drawing lines like this I can see that there is slight jitter when I am drawing at 100% now usually when zooming in at 200 or 300 
this jitter it will disappear but at 100% when I draw like this I usually get jitters and this happens to a lot of other tablets that I have used so I'm actually not surprised to see it here as well so let me just undo it I'm gonna I have assigned undo to this button so let's press that undo redo undo now I'm drawing at 300% to show you how smooth the lines can be now at this um, resolution at this 300 zoom I can see some lag maybe that's because of this cursor I'm going to press the caps lock to turn it into the crosshair and try and draw it again so now there is less lag and I'm not sure if you can see clearly but now the jitter it's gone so let me zoom in closer for you to see so you see all these lines here these are curving very well so all the jitter it's gone so unfortunately there is no way to change the brush size with this scroll wheel this is a sign to changing the zoom pressure sensitivity works very well although you do need that initial activation force you do need to press down very slightly to get very thin lines but overall it's quite intuitive and the lines come out just the way I want them to be it's very predictable there is no lag whatsoever let me show you how the lines taper the lines taper very well with some other tablets sometimes the line they taper like this it's not smooth but here it seems that I can get the line to ta taper very gradually very nicely Photoshop works really well so now let's try Adobe Illustrator this is version CS5 on the Mac I'm going to choose a brush and see if pressure sensitivity works here so I'm going to change it to pressure set the variation to maximum and try and draw here so pressure works here as well the lines they are very predictable they have a very nice uh, variation so the pen is really very sensitive and works quite nicely here this is Medibank Paint Pro pressure works very nicely here let's try the thin and thick lines the spiral and let's zoom in and take a look at whether the lines are smooth or do they have jitter so there is very slight jitter here and here for this spiral the jitter is not that obvious actually this jitter it's less compared to Photoshop these are hashing lines the lines taper quite nicely overall this pen display works quite well with this particular app I don't really have much complaints now the strange thing here is when I use the scroll wheel it actually moves the canvas up and down rather than zoom in and out so the zooming function only works with Adobe software but not this not on Medibank Paint Pro this is mischief pressure works here very nicely as well after calibrating the screen for parallax I can draw quite accurately I do not use Krita but some of you want me to sh I do not use Krita but some of you might be interested to see if pressure works here and it does very nicely very smooth no lag at all this is Tayasui Sketches Pro now Tayasui Sketches Pro they assign certain brush styles to the strokes so pressure sensitivity works but ultimately it will still be affected by the brush styles that is uh, default on Tayasui Sketches Pro 
So for example, I can draw like this very quickly. I get thin lines, but if I draw very slowly, I'm actually using the pressure to get the thick lines. But if I draw with pressure very quickly, this is what I get. This is Affinity Photo. I can use the scroll wheel to zoom the canvas as well. Let me pick a brush. Pressure works here very nicely. Let me zoom in closer. People don't usually use this app to draw. But anyway, let me show you the strokes, how they taper. I think they taper quite nicely but not as nice compared to Photoshop and Medibank Paint Pro. While I was drawing earlier, I noticed some dust particles behind the screen. So here is one, and this is definitely behind because I cannot remove this. So this is one. There are other particles somewhere else on the screen. The dust particle that I showed you earlier is here. I see another one around here, here, and here. So this screen is not totally sealed. Um, for me, if I'm spending a few hundred dollars, I see dust particles, of course, it's not going to be a good feeling. But I personally have gone past that stage of caring about all these things. So it's not really that big of an issue for me. I, but I just want to point this, um, point this issue out to you. I think that's all for today's review. If I have any updates or if I do manage to test this on Windows OS in the future, I will put that information in my text review. You can visit the text review through the link in the video description below. If you want to check out more reviews for graphic tablets and pen displays like this, I have reviewed close to 40 of such uh, tablets and monitors on my website. You can visit the link in the video description just below as well. So thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful. See you in the next one. Bye.